this week. On days of our Steelers, the Steelers have a crucial AFC North game against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that beat up on them last year on Monday Night Football, which really was the turning point in their season, in which case they were 11-0 and then lost that game and it all went to hell. As this one is tipped and intercepted by Terrell Edmonds, so great start by the Steelers defense, who will be missing TJ Watt, Tyson Alualu, Stephon Tuitt, and Alex Heisman today, but Minka Fitzpatrick breaks it up and it's picked off by Terrell Edmonds. But anyways, the Steelers, they need to prove their doubters wrong today. They're playing a team that, honestly, I mean, they, they're they are on the rise, but they're still not an absolutely amazing NFL team. They're either third or fourth best team in this division. It really depends on what the Steelers do. But the Steelers, they have a tough schedule, the hardest schedule in the league. They need to win games like this if they expect to make the playoffs, which I still believe they can do. Anything can change, but they have to win games like these in order to do it. Because, you know, they're playing the Packers next week, stuff like that. Like, they have to win AFC North games. And that's one is a broken tackle, and it's taught. And it's a touchdown by Tyler Boyd, the former receiver from Pitt. And he is into the end zone. And the defense, you wouldn't expect it, actually. You would expect it because they're on the field for at least 80% of the game. They get tired, and wouldn't you know, it affects their tackling skills and therefore affects the outcome of the game. As Ben right here, he gets clobbered. He has nowhere to go. The pocket collapses, and he is sacked. And Roethlisberger not having a great game so far. But the Steelers, if they lose this game, they're 1-2. and two. If they win this game, they're 2-1. and one. And they've lost their past two home games, the wild card game against Cleveland and then last week's game against the Raiders. And that one was horrifically thrown. Oh, they're really going to call P.I. on that? Okay, I admit, even as a Steelers fan, that's BS. Like, did he interfere with the receiver's ability to catch the ball? Yes, but was it a catchable ball? Absolutely not. James Washington is not 8'5", believe it or not as Ben, and he's actually going to pump fake, and he's going to fool the man, because obviously no one's going to expect Ben to take off, he gets the first down, nice little play by him, third down and six, let's see what Matt Canada, and it just, nobody looks for the ball, and Ben puts it in the wrong spot, wow, definitely didn't see that one coming, but the Steelers, they have to win this game in order to keep up with the pace that they should be in order to sneak into the playoffs, get a playoff spot 9-8, 10-7 record because they have a very hard schedule coming up. This is one of their easier games they're going to have in the next month. So they have to get their stuff together right now, and they are not. And I understand injuries, right? Injuries are a huge part of football. You have to learn to play through injuries and have adversity. But I also understand, if you take away the best player on on any team, like TJ Watts taken away from the Steelers, and a whole bunch of their core pieces away, are they going to struggle? Yes. But are they going to look this bad? No. And I believe the outcome of this game will not be determined whether all of those players did play today. Whoever wins this game will have won this game with or without their starters playing all 22 positions and that's just how I feel as Ben is brought down and Roethlisberger is going to take the snap he's going to pump fake he's going to throw it and they actually use the middle of the field oh my goodness the floor is lava challenge is usually what's going down in the middle of the field apparently in Matt Canada's playbook but he throws it to Juju and it was actually completed and Najee Harris breaking free he has a big run here and he's going to get about 13 14 yards out of that play it's going to be a first down for Najee Harris, excuse me, that was more than 13, 14, that was over 17 yards, and Claypool's going to catch the ball, and he's going to drag into the line, of, not the line of scrimmage, into the chains, and that is going to be a first down for Chase Claypool, great play, third down and four, can this offense get it done, or will we just drop a play from Randy Feekner 2.0, except we don't run Wildcat on fourth down and nine with Jalen Samuels in a crucial game against the Buffalo Bills, <coughs> Randy Feekner, excuse me, got a little out of character there, and Ben, he lines up, he throws it to Najee on third and five, and he is easily going to get the first down. He's going to stiff arm someone. He's going to get inside the four-yard line, Najee Harris, for the first down. Steelers trying to tie it up here. Roethlisberger takes a snap. It's to Fryermuth, and that's going to be a touchdown. Pat Fryermuth's first touchdown in the NFL in the regular season. This game is tied up 7-7, seven to seven, and Fryermuth, you already hear the Muth chants just like people used to chant Heath Miller's first name, Heath, in the... Heinz Field stands. They're chanting his name, and you love to see it. As this one is going to be caught, and the Bengals just trying to get something going before half, maybe a field goal. But no, you have to remember, 
this is the Steelers. And they have a young secondary under other than Joe Hayden, as this is caught. What a remarkable catch. This reminds me of the LSU days with Burrow and Chase. And that's Jamar Chase for the touchdown. And they stunned the Steelers before the half, and the James Pierre hype train has taken a massive blow. Mike Tomlin sits there and does nothing, puts his hand on his head, and just mumbles into his mic something about how, well, at least we won in 2008. As this one, Joe Mixon's going to get the first down. And that's the one thing about the Steelers that I like and dislike. I like how they have a winning culture. The standard is the standard. Awesome. I love that stuff. That's cool. But they use it as an excuse to never change. They never change their offensive playbook. And when they do, it's for the worse. Like, they used to be a run-first team, and now they're not. I understand. If they're a pass-first team, they're a pass-first team. But it looks like they don't, even, they don't even attempt to run the ball. And instead, they dump it off to Najee Harris every play, which, if it works, it works. But... That just proves to me that you're scared to throw the ball and you are just living in your fears. You're scared to run the ball, but you're also scared to throw the ball. Also, on that note, Derek Watt, we have him on the team. Why is he only in the game one play on offense at most? I've seen him once this entire season. We pay him. It's this play right here that he was in. And then, actually, excuse me, twice. And this one's intercepted. And Ben throws it right to the defender. And this one's picked off. And that's going to be inside of the 20-yard line. The Bengals are going to start their drive in the red zone. And Roethlisberger has his second interception of the day. But don't worry. He's going to have a ton of fantasy points because he'll end up throwing the ball 58 times. Yay, good job, fantasy owners. As right here, Joe Burrow is going to scramble. He's going to get the first down. And this is going to be a first down and goal for the Cincinnati Bengals here. Play clock winding down. Joe Burrow takes the snap. He's scrambling. He has a ton of time. He finds Chase in the end zone wide open, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's doing the Millie Rock and the Gritty, and believe it or not, there's nothing that they can do about it because guess what? <laughs> Our defense is injured to hell and back, and even better, they just aren't good in general when it comes to easy plays like that for some reason. And our offense can't do anything to back it up. This defense has protected a lead once this entire season. That was the very end of the Bills game as Najee Harris. What a great play. And that's going to be an encroachment on the defense. That'll be declined. So first down for the Steelers. Third down and 10 here. And he's just going to chuck it. And that is overthrown. Just like all of, other, all of Ben's other passes. And Boswell trying to make it a one possession game. Let's see what happens here. And oh my goodness, even Boswell can't make a field goal. When Boswell misses a field goal at home, that's when you know we are in, we're getting absolutely massacred. The Bengals, just like the Monday Night Football game, they haven't done anything spectacular. I cannot imagine being the opposing team's defense against the Steelers. They must literally just sit there and do the bare minimum, if not even less, to beat us. Like they're like oh what the heck are they doing like why are they doing that nice catch by ray ray mcleod that's my boy he follows me on twitter i love him so 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 much first down pittsburgh and what a nice way to start the fourth quarter but the steelers like they they are bad i mean their offensive line is terrible as expected they're young and they're a new group i didn't expect for them to be anything amazing but my goodness they are they are awful I mean, this is this is horrendous. That does not help Ben Roethlisberger. And honestly, I would say bench him, but that's not going to solve the problems of Matt Canada and the offensive line and the inability to run the football. And who do we have behind him? Mason Rudolph. Yeah, not going to make much of a difference, people. Really doesn't matter who we have in a quarterback in this offense. Patrick Mahomes would struggle because our playing calling limits us, as this is going to be a, now a 24-10 ball game, and that one's going to be caught by Jamar Chase. He's having himself a game today. But this is, this is bad, guys. I mean, I know this is only week three, and by all means, things could change. But this offense, this looks worse than the 2019 offense with Devlin Hodges, which went off for a few weeks, except then sucked the rest of the way, and Mason Rudolph. I mean, this is bad. Last year's offense in the latter part of the year started to suck. Looks a heck of a lot better than this offense does because, wow. I mean, we're just getting yards in garbage time. I mean, honestly. But hey, there's still a chance that we can win, so... You know, we might, we better get going if we honestly want to win this game because this is a bigger game than people expect in our schedule. I mean, we have the hardest schedule in the league. We have to do something as the pocket collapses around Ben once again and his inability to move, and I respect him for slimming and trimming down. We shouldn't call him Big Ben anymore. Look at him. He's not big. As this one is going to be dropped by Eric Ebron. Who would have thought he dropped the ball? Why do we even have him at this point, honestly? Like, I get last year, but why do we still have him? Like, just pay off his money, let him go. Get someone else on the depth chart. As it's fourth down and ten. Okay. It's fourth and ten. 
right? If you honestly want to win this game, I get n dumping off to Najee Harris has been your thing. Why are you throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage on 4th and 10, okay? Literally, the, the, the touchdown is 11 yards away. So basically, if he gets the first down, then it's a touchdown, right? Why are you doing that? Like, they give up. They're not trying, okay? The offensive line can't block to save their lives. Ben Roethlisberger can't throw the ball. People cannot catch the ball. Nobody can run the ball. We don't know how to properly utilize Najee Harris in the run game. We're doing inside zone just like we did with James Conner. Matt Canada is Randy Feekner 2.0, except he doesn't call stupid wildcat plays that ends up screening us over, as they should be, because we are not a wildcat team. That's just not the structure of our team. It never has been, and it most likely never will be. Our defense is injured, and, you know, that's just a part of life. We have to be able to go through any sort of adversity, because if we don't, we're not going to win another game the rest, of this ye the rest of the year if we can't go through even the smallest bit of adversity, right? We had no sacks. We didn't even have any quarterback pressures, no quarterback hits. It, it was shameful. It was very shameful. The secondary... Could, they couldn't get anything going. This team can't do any, can't get anything going. Matt Canada is to, is enslaved to Ben Roethlisberger and who he thinks Ben Roethlisberger could be and can't be, instead of who Ben Roethlisberger actually is. I don't care who our quarterback is. We should not be playing like this. And it's shameful that we can't even win one out of two games at home. And you would expect to go to Green Bay and beat them next week. The way it looks, we're going to get smacked. We're going to have our Gluteus Maximus served to us on a silver platter, and honestly, we deserve it. This team is incompetent, and if they keep playing like this, then they're going to be sitting in Week 7, and they're going to be 1-6 in six when it's all said and done with. And honestly, I won't feel bad for them. Their time has come. The standard is a standard. Live up to it, Mike Tomlin. Don't live in your fears. Coach the game of football. Run the ball. See how it works. Put Najee in the backfield. He's a power back. Put Derek Watt in front of Najee. I don't care how obvious it looks. And run the football. Our offense needs to have experience running the ball. And so does Najee Harris. Because it's great that he had 100 receiving yards. But that just shows me that we're dinking and dunking. Because that's all we believe Ben Roethlisberger can do. And to an extent, that is all Ben Roethlisberger can do. Which is why I understand he did a lot for this franchise. And I love him to death. But he is not... He's a liability at this team right now, and we should have parted ways after last season. He should have retired with Marquise Pouncey, and honestly, he would get over any sort of bad blood of us sort of forcing him into retirement, as he should, okay? This organization is much better than this. We're not winning the Super Bowl, but we are so much better than this. I don't care who's playing quarterback. I don't care who the offensive coordinator is. We have enough talent to be a playoff team. And the fact that we're sitting here one and two, I'm not panicking over it. But we look like crap. I mean, this is the worst I have ever... This is the worst I have ever seen the Steelers offense play. And I have watched them for years. I've watched them at really low lows to our standards and just to any standards. And we need to change up our playbook. We need to not live in our fears. We need to have better execution. And we just need to say, you know what? Screw it. You have to take risks, okay? 100 yards receiving for Najee Harris proves to me that we're dinking and dunking. And our quarterback is not Tom Brady. And we do not have the offensive line of the past New England Patriots and Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the resources that Tom Brady has around him and has had around him throughout his career. We can't be doing that. That just shows to me that we're scared to go deep. We're scared to use the middle of the field. And the only time we do go deep is to chase Claypool because he's tall. So it's very predictable. And he'll get it down once just so we can pass had been stats so with that being said we need to be better okay we're on to the Packers in Lambeau Field and I think Tom Grossi is going to have a good week next week and so are the days of our Steelers